Previously on the MBS show, Norman Sanzo and Daniel Anthony interviewed AC Racebus, the producer for videos such as Bronies React. During the session, someone had broken in and interrupted the interview. Find out who the culprit is in this concluding episode of the MBS show special, part 2. Who's that extra person? Could it be... Is that Saber's mark? No. Oh, okay. Um, then who is it? <laughs> I am actually... Uh, insert Woody Common here. <laughs> I'm sorry. So uh, bottle draft. Uh, <laughs> so, so deep draft note him. <laughs> so the, the, the living... The living Mike... <laughs> oh, boys. Uh, this, this interview has gone dirty. <laughs> the living Mando phone. <laughs> the living Mando. Wooden draft. <laughs> oh, gosh, this is going to ring in my head for the rest of the day. <laughs> so, um, hello there, Saber. How are you? Uh, welcome to the MBS show, this um, derpy episode of this derpy show that's already gone derpy. Derpy episodes are best episodes. I'm glad. Yeah. It's about time you admitted that, Saber. I know, man. I'm, all, I'm sorry. I've just been balling up this entire time. and finally just gained the strength to admit it. <laughs> I'm proud of myself. Those, those classes really paid off. Yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> so, um, we were asking AC Ray's best question. So, um, do you care to share some of your questions for him? Oh, my questions for Ray's? Yeah, like, ask him. <laughs> yeah, Ray's, yes. I have a question for you. Yeah. Why didn't you invite me for the first Bernie's reaction? <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Yeah, I'm calling you out right now. <laughs> I <knew it. laughs> well, Saber, you got your revenge. I knew it. I hear no, it. no, I have a good reason for this. No, you don't. I have a good, yeah. I don't. don't. So well, let's hear it. When I, see, when I watched The Ballad of the Brony, I was like, you know, whoever made this, just no. <laughs> like, never again. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I could actually give a serious answer to this, <laughs> and it is, it is that when I went around finding people, I actually didn't, first off, I was struggling getting people onto the first one, and what I did when I went around was I, uh, I, I focused on finding people who had video clips of themselves on YouTube, uh, so we're at kind of being the not- videoed guy, but I was like, oh, what the hell, why not? And when I came across Saber Sparks' channel, uh, I remember it vividly because he made a, the video about Derby and how everyone needs to just calm their tits. And he was showing, like, he used that music from Lord of the Rings. I was like, oh, God, I have to know what song that is. I can't think of it. And I contacted him on YouTube, and that was our first time we ever talked. Oh, yeah, I remember that. It was like this time last year. <laughs> no, because I, ha- I hadn't made the Brody's react yet. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. But yeah, it was probably... That was you! I, was just, I almost ignored that message. I'm like, who's this mother? <laughs> All right, I, guess I'll, I guess I'll be a good person. I guess I'll answer it. Yeah, yeah. I have time See, well, that just goes to show that Saber only... only. <laughs> Thanks, Saber. I'm <laughs> just kidding! No, I do remember that, though. Wow, that's way back when. Huh. Cool. And that awkward moment with that derby video bomb was completely wrong. <laughs> well, it, <laughs> anyway, no, no one needs to know. No one needs to know. Um, oh, this is going in, man. This is going in. We'll just unlist the video. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny because I, I remember how people were responding because you were in uh, the uh, the derby one. And, and people were people were like, wait. Why is Saber freaking out when he just told us not to freak out? <laughs> it's it's why I was thinking the exact same thing. It was like, are you offended by this? And then Saber just went ballistic. I, I just like, love whoa, your, whoa, whoa, whoa. No, no, God. Like, you know, the office coming out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got it in the office. Well, the way I saw it raised was I had a unique opportunity to be on Bernie's React. I'm like, I'm going to make the most, most of it. I'm going to. Oh, and you be, did. Most reactive reactor of all time. And I. I spat muffins everywhere. I bought three muffins from my gas station, brought it back to my apartment, and I ate one because I was hungry. I spat out the other two, the, the, the other one, and did it wrong. The camera wasn't even recording. Oh, God, no. <laughs> oh, God, what a good shot. The camera's not recording. I actually didn't know that. 
third one I got it right. Yeah, the second one I spat all over my floor and I was like, well, <laughs> well, flipped. We all had those moments where we did something so awesome and we realized the red light wasn't on. <laughs> <laughs> those are like the worst moments in life. Oh. <laughs> did you get that? Did you get that? Did you get that? Um, Maybe. No, I, I would have, but... <laughs> Dude, that's funny. It's a good thing you bought three muffins. Yeah, I was hungry, so I uh, thought, you know, better be prepared. <laughs> but no, uh, it, was, it was fun. Uh, it was really, really cool getting on uh, Burns React and being a part of it up to this point. It's, uh, you know, my favorite series in the entire fandom, so it is truly an honor. Uh, awesome. My so, dream Simon, is now to that be... we have you on, can you explain to us how it felt like working with AC on the whole thing and like being a participant in Brody's React? Oh god, uh, all, he, all he does is, yeah, it's horrible. <laughs> like, a paid document on Google, on Google Chrome, whatever, Google Docs, whatever the fuck that is. And it's like, here, I need you to react to an hour's worth of reactions. And, and it's like all scripted. He makes us say things. Like, we don't even have the... <laughs> Everything scripted by him. Everything. <laughs> Everything. He's like, I want you separated to say no, no, no. And, and, and with the document, a picture of my mom tied to a chair with a knife to her throat. And I'm like, I got to now. I'm going to kill her. So, no, I'm not from the race, though. <laughs> He's laughing because it's true. <laughs> what he'll do is he'll send the document out say, here's the, uh, here's some reactions uh, of the minute and second mark to certain parts of the video, and he says, just react to it. Just tell me how you would react naturally. And then my idea that I take a piece of paper and I write down what I thought what comes to mind, and then I get my camera and I act it out. So yeah, that's, that's how you do it. And then you take your footage, you send it to race, and he compiles it, edits it, uploads it, ta-da! Ta-da! So have you ever recorded, like, a first impression kind of deal when you haven't seen the video ever before, maybe for an episode? And just record your first ever impression of it. See, that's, I, I don't because I, I'm too uh, anxious, I guess. I, I want to see the episode. Like I, every, Everything I've reacted to, I've seen already before, except for Cupcakes. I, I, that was the only thing. I, there was one of the videos I'd never seen before. And uh, I was like, dry heaving. I was like, oh my god, I'm going to die. But no, most of the things I react to, I, I've seen before. But I still have the exact same reaction in mind when I first saw it. It's an honor to have you on, Saber. Really. Oh, it's, it's, it's good to be here. Um, you mean everybody's bad? It's just so great to have two best friends on our show. <laughs> He's not my friend. <laughs> you know what? You know what? He just called me out twice in the span of five minutes. So, you know, when we went, when we went, when we were in uh, L.A., we were walking to uh, IHOP, and I was so excited to be with my quote-unquote friend. And then we sat down, had dinner, or we had breakfast and everything with the gang. We walked out to the checkout, and we we're like, <laughs> paying our tabs. So I'm like, good thing my friend's here. Ray's looked at me and said, are you going to pay for yourself? <laughs> and I said, no, I thought you got me covered. And he said, uh, I was, no, I don't. <laughs> and I was broke. I had no money. I was like, well, what, a good, what a good friend Ray's is. And then Ray just walks out with his YouTube money. And I'm, just, and I'm just sitting there shrugging like, I guess I gotta wash the dishes for the next hour. <laughs> See, but it was, a, it was a good experience for you, right? With all of your political science background. Yeah, I... <laughs> political science, preparing me for the, for the world of dishwashers. <laughs> <laughs> oh god! Oh, I knew, I knew. The second you said IHOP, I knew that's where the story was going. <laughs> I remember you doing the twenty-five bronies you should know. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and you impersonated all twenty-five of them so well, Sabers. But how do you rate his impersonation of you? Well, we're still discussing our small court plan because he copied my idea. <laughs> <laughs> the expression on my face. I was in Florida on vacation. Walking back from the beach, open up my iPhone and says, 25 brains you should know, and an AC race vest. And I'm like, I'm like, this mother, he just copied my idea. <laughs> I have to open up my phone and I watch the video. And for his, and, for, and lucky him, of course, he says my name first. He's, and he, he thought that would not, you know, that he thought that would get me off his trail. But no, I called it to my lawyer the next minute and I said, we have to see this guy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was, I, I did a great job. Race has amazing production value and quality in his videos. He'll, he'll go the extra mile you know, to get that shot. And it really speaks in his videos. And, and a lot of the, uh, I mean, I hate to say it, but like a lot of the like 
less than a thousand view videos, like his blogs, it was fantastic. I love watching them. But uh, he'll, he'll go to crazy lanes to get those shots. And, and, and for this video for 25 Brains, you know, I mean, he would tuck a bell and shove tacos in his face people watching. <laughs> oh, that eggs. was a Taco Bell? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. Oh, He'll do whatever it takes to get the shot. <laughs> I, 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 actually, I actually was asked to leave Taco Bell. Are you serious? Work. Yeah, Whoa. because we were filming inside, and <laughs> they were like, okay, there's this guy spazzing over tacos over there. Oh, there's a camera. Uh, sir, can you, like, leave? Yeah, yeah. Goes outside, films real fast, and then I, like, did a burnout out of the parking lot. <laughs> Throw the rappers at him. <laughs> no, so I was, I was, uh, I laughed when I saw the first one. Jellies of the month, and I was like, I don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, AC, actually, just uh, on this count, how many times have you been asked to leave a certain venue because you were filming there? <laughs> what you were doing? Well, sir, what I was telling them earlier was how I've actually been, I was uh, escorted off of Fremont Street in Vegas last time I did the, uh, um, the My Little Vegas video. You were escorted off of Vegas? <laughs> yeah, by security. And what? then we got caught the third time we went, and they were like, you do this again, we're signing you for trespassing. <laughs> wow, I told you, any length. <laughs> yeah, and, and, uh, oh, God, it's, it, I, it's happened a couple times. The, the problem <laughs> is that people don't know your intentions, and they see a camera, and they expect you to do something incredibly stupid. Or something that's going to get them in trouble. It's the first thing that crosses their mind. Mr. President! Uh, Mr. President! <laughs> please, I need to shut the floor. You guys wearing your suits. Security, get out of my <laughs> well, you know what? <laughs> Saber, Saber makes a point about how I'll, I'll go, like, that extra mile to get that shot. And that started from a young age. Back when I was a uh, little filly, I used to go hiking in the woods with my uncle... And we would go... I don't know why I started talking about that's that. That's a bad fanfic. <laughs> <laughs> so it sounds like a fanfic. Yeah, but it's it's a non-fiction fanfic. <laughs> Ooh. Sounds, like, sounds like a story. Fan, non, <laughs> fan, non fic <laughs> And, and I, uh, we would go to Yosemite and <laughs> you know, I would take a bunch of pictures. And for some reason, I was that idiot child who was like, I really want to know what it's like to look down a waterfall. So I'm like underneath the fencing, reaching over this giant cliff edge to take a picture, and my I feel my uncle like grab me and be like, "What the hell are you doing?" But I got the picture. I was like, <laughs> and "That's all that counts." That's all that ever counts. So, um, how was the picture? That's the main question. It came out pretty cool. It was it was cool, it and it's that picture that my parents are always like, "This is when we realize you're an idiot." <laughs> Well, I had the same experience because last year we had photography class as part of communications and they sent us out to take ridiculous photos of a train station. So I just wanted to have the best picture. So I went out on top of the tracks and took a picture. And they're like, Daniel, train. Yeah, I know I'm in a train station. No, train. They're like, okay, okay, fine. And I had the best shot of the class. <laughs> See, that's what it's all about. Yeah, I, uh, especially like you guys were talking about earlier, this, this new Hawaii uh, series that I'm putting out. Uh, when I film, I keep in mind what looks good, like what what looks cool, what's that quality shot, and it's the reason why I had 25 hours of B-roll for Hawaii. It's a two-week vacation, Whoa. I have 25 hours of footage of it. Good lord, Riz. That's, that's more than, that's more than <laughs> a day, I, I, I I'm never gonna, walked out of it. I'm going to make my own Brody documentary now. <laughs> Probably, I, I've yeah. never been anywhere with more than 24 hours of footage. Wow. So um, it's interesting to have you both here on. Um, since you um, kind of do similar formats of video, um, reacting to stuff, and the most current one I saw is um, Brony's react to Twilight spoilers and Brony 101 Alicorns. So um, have your videos been compared to one another? Well, uh, it's funny because... Uh... You stole my idea again. <laughs> literally, literally 10 seconds after I upload my IC is on the news feed. Well, I saw it, and then I was like, I'm going to make one real fast. <laughs> well, no, how could you have seen it? You didn't subscribe to me. You <laughs> what? You not subscribed to each other? I know. He, he, he just subscribed like a week ago, and I was like, they're both 
I thought Friendship was magic, but apparently it's just too bad. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was subscribed to Saber, and I found out that I wasn't. Oh, God. Uh, and, I, and I found out I thought I had a friend. Like, <laughs> Friendship was magic. <laughs> Friendship was magic, but then YouTube had to go on. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I uh, I I kind of when when the whole thing came up, I'm like, okay, I, I you know I'm thinking, okay, what would be funny way to react to this? People are starting to freak out. They shouldn't be freaking out. It's too early to freak out. Let's wait. Freak out. Freak out. <laughs> A lot of people though. The, actually, the way I knew that Saber Spark made this video was because people were asking me immediately on mine, did you and Saber Spark plan this? Did you guys like like set this up? And I was like, that's kind of weird, because Saber Spark's not in my video. What are they talking about? <laughs> like, I was really confused. And then uh, this this one guy, uh, Taylor, who makes music, is used to be AJ the Engineer and then became silent. I don't know what he is anymore. <laughs> oh, but, okay. Uh, <laughs> that's where AJ the Engineer went. Yeah, and he, he sent me a message on Skype, and he's like, do you realize this just happened? <laughs> and... <laughs> I'm watching Sarah's first video just laughing my ass off because it's just the... I was like, oh my god. And this was brilliantly done. Just brilliant. Great minds think alike. That's what we try to tell ourselves. Steals my idea. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it was funny because uh, I released mine. I threw it on YouTube. I thought, whatever, you know, it's a funny video. I felt like doing it. And then I refreshed my news feed like 10 minutes later. I saw a racist video. And I was like, oh my god, there's no way that he actually... I watched it, and I'm like, oh, my God, he did. <laughs> exact same idea. And that's when I was like, okay, Race, you and I are brothers, by the way. And yeah. we were like, we're like, yeah, now it's confirmed. But it was just funny because we, it was it came down to timing. It was just perfect timing. Yeah. And um, I found it funny because, once again, his production quality is much better. He ran outside. He, he uh, doubled yeah. his hair. All I did was like, I'm like, I'm too late. I'm going to go outside. I'll just run out my basement. See, I think, that's where, I think that's where we disagree because I – what I love about your okay, now we're gonna now we just turn into a circle jerk. But whatever, <laughs> uh, with with sabers, <laughs> the thing that I loved about it was the whole like. First off, your facial expressions will always get me, and the way that you were like were, like had that like pouty cry going when you put the Joker's face over Twilight, like <laughs> that killed me. And then the stuff you're screaming, the stuff with perspective, like I just it, it's nice because. We have two different takes, but they're practically the same thing, but absolutely unplanned. Ugh. How do you all cry so well on tape? I cracked myself. Yeah, when I write up the formats for each Bronies React, I'm like, Saber, this is a pinching moment. <laughs> <laughs> I look at him I'm like, oh god. <laughs> I mean... For Saber, it was quite easy. Well, I think for like AC, the first time I saw him ever like in tears per se on that video was like he was holding his hand to his ear, like that looks so legit. That looks so legit right there. Real tears. Well, see, what people don't understand is I actually was really upset about the Twilight Alicorn video. <laughs> or spoiler, like I, I actually, I, I was full on upset because I wasn't actually revealed. The spoiler wasn't revealed to me until some guy. Named Saber Spark put up a video on YouTube and totally just put it out there, despite the fact that it's a warning spoilers. I still watch. You were given a fair warning, Race. All right, but in your in your pursuit of copying my work, you watched the video anyway. You said, oh, "I'll make this video too." And, and in the and in the in, in the less than two minutes, you had it uploaded on YouTube, and I was like, "French, you going on here?" Scrolling through the internet. <laughs> oh, that's the voice I've been messing around with like the last couple of weeks. I was like, lightning oh, yeah. I use it. Lightning yeah. Yeah, yeah, Kathy Westlock now knows about that voice. And all the spaghetti <laughs> smeared all over the interview. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, what was I doing with that interview? I don't know. Oh, good times. Oh, I'm seeing that you two actually are really, really budding producers in, in your own ways. Are you all planning any big collaboration like between you two in the future that you know you would like people to know about? <sighs> um, we want to collab. We want, we want to do more work together because we're literally right up each other's alleys in, in what we do. Just like being silly, goofy on, on camera. Just that's what we do. We're, I guess we're personalities. I guess whatever. But uh, at the moment, I've I gotta finish a couple of my own projects before I open up any new ones. But when the summertime rolls around, then definitely want to keep working with them. 
I know that uh, I'm going to Las Vegas as Unicon here in about a week and a half from now. And rumors have it that race might be there. If he is, I'm bringing my camera. I want to do something. <laughs> Well, those moments are rare. Not like that. <laughs> oh, oh. We were actually just talking about Las Vegas as Unicorn earlier in the show, and um, yeah, should I bring it back up? Yeah, there's yeah. a segment that I want it to happen if a AC Race Best goes there. I would like it to be Bronies react to AC Race Best goes to Las Vegas as Unicorn. It's just gonna be me taking a pie and just throwing it in his face and saying, <laughs> "Priceless." Uh, hey. That and, must uh, be on a list of pies that I like. <laughs> and that would be like a new file that we'll be throwing around on top of Well, actually, you know what? This All, all this talk about Las Vegas is actually raises an interesting point, too. Is this Bronies React that will be coming up, potentially, right right up against uh, Unicon, is going to open up probably a little bit different because everything that we've seen up to this point has been individuals reacting. Okay. But... Because there's going to be so many bronies together in a certain place, I, I'm wondering how it's going to turn out. I wonder if anyone has anything up their sleeve. I don't, wear, I don't wear shirts, so I wouldn't Which, know. Well, Saber, I wouldn't expect it anyways. But, <laughs> but there, was the, the screening <laughs> of, there was the screening of the Season 2 premiere during the first brony con, and that was kind of a company with all the reactions in the crowd when, you know, this, like Discord came out, people were screaming from the back, they were like, screw you, Discord! <laughs> you know, you See, I, those, I do that. I do that. Special. I do that anyways. Like it's seven thirty, and my roommate will be sleeping next to me. Oh, that sounded dirty. He's, he's in the bed. <laughs> <laughs> like, and I quote from an AC Race one of his videos. He, when we we're at, we we're at Disneyland, he bumps me in the shoulder. He says, "Yeah, he's looking at this girl who's performing in the streets, like she's part of this Disney act for Cars, or whatever, and she's wearing this nineteen fifties like." Uh, Outfit and the race bumps in the shoulder, and I quote, He says, Do you think I can pull that off? <laughs> and I just look at him like, Well, I, I guess if you try hard enough, you can yank it off, I guess. <laughs> and then he's like, No, I don't mean it like that. <laughs> All right, race, what were you saying again before I really interrupt? <laughs> uh, uh, I, mm. About you sitting in your room with your roommate and you're watching. Uh... Yeah, when I'm when I'm spooning my roommate uh, <laughs> we watch? while watching the episode, it it turns it's funny because I'll like get into it. <laughs> and, and, and <laughs> I can just imagine you taking a spoon and hand spoon and just like lightsaber battles of spoon. <laughs> <laughs> right, the chest. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh. I, I don't know if, if your shows usually go this direction, guys, but <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Probably but, because you know we have four content producers on the show right now. It has to go in a really, really weird direction. We're pulling in four separate directions. True. Yeah. And but as far as like, I was just gonna say that when I watch the episodes, I'll get into them. I'll be like, and don't, don't do this or do that or that or this or this or that. To be specific. No wonder why you do such a great job with Brony's react. Yes, because I'm not vague at all. <laughs> I mean, you should probably tape yourself on a raw first reaction and just compare. Well, you know, that's the thing is, people have asked me, why don't you guys just film it when you first watch it? And it's because, for me, I, I'm i not so loud in my outward appearance. Like, I might say stuff, but I'm not thinking about what looks good on camera or, like, how, how can I make how I did react more vocal, you know, in a physical sense. And I, the thing is, I don't want to worry about that. I want to just watch the episode for what it is. You know, some people just don't react loudly. It's not, I, I would feel like I'm missing something if I worry about saying something over a line. So that's why I don't ever, you know, record. It's kind of like how Saber said he'll watch the thing first. Um, it's, it it's kind of gives you a better idea of how you, you yourself would react, if that makes sense. It does, it does. I mean, for me, I pause the episode and tweet, then I resume. That's what I do. Have you ever considered using the that format, like recording yourself live and um, using that as a reference tool for writing a script down or something? I don't, actually, because for me, I in my mind, I know what kind of hit a nerve or set off a laugh or made me go like, what? What? Like, there's certain things. And then... Like I said, I, I'll go through and kind of see what is the fandom itself? Is there something I've missed? Um, 
And it's funny because this last Bronies React that we did to the season three premiere, I almost entirely missed. It wasn't in the format. It wasn't anywhere. And I wasn't seeing anything about it where they said the phrase, then we'll know that she's ready. And I literally caught that the night before this was ready to be uploaded. And I was like, wait, what? Like, I was freaking out. Like my, I was like, Sarah. But I was talking to my girlfriend. I'm like, Sarah, oh, my God. And she's like, yeah, you forgot about that. Oh, my God. Yeah, oh, my God. So the, the wonder that was in the last part of that video, I was wondering, why did you put it there? Well, I, I actually, I could have put it elsewhere, but the reason I, it was because it all kind of just went over, uh, kind of got glazed over. And like I said, there were people who responded or reacted to the whole episode, but no one really said anything about it. And I think it's because it came up so early that it just kind of went right over a lot of our heads. And so that's the reason I put it in the back as kind of that, like, that last punch that you feel in the fight is the one you're going to remember. And it's yeah. like, oh. Oh. Uh-huh. And then we get the season finale, Toy Corn. She is ready. The best part would be is if there's like no Alicorn reference at all in that episode. Why well, should be like another Apple Boom episode and that's it. <laughs> you, you know what? It's <clears throat> you know what? Babsy's back. Babsy! <laughs> Yeah. Since there's no derpy this episode, um, this season, since there's no it'll derpy be, this season, uh, it'll be hasty turnips, <laughs> turnip drugs episode. <laughs> Finally. Um, Finally, that bean's desk that hangs from her library will get an episode of its own. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering about that. The, would that cause trouble? The Twilight bean desk? No, yeah. that, that thing's the best pony in my opinion. You know, that bean's desk. <laughs> And that, that character has retained its 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 true form and hasn't changed throughout the years. So I'm proud of it. You know what? I think yeah. that business is already an elecorn. It, it has a horn. It has wings. So it does actually. <laughs> These are elecorns. Oh my God, why is this not dawning on me? <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> uh, yeah. As far as as far as my best pony, I said Rainbow Dash earlier, but that was obviously a joke. Um, my favorite pony, and, and it is pretty much best pony, I think it pretty much everyone agrees, is the fifth book on the third shelf, uh, to the left. What a, what a band. Are you gonna answer, like, how Final Draft answered? Because Final Draft came on our show and he said, like, best pony is Twilight, but favorite pony is Luna. <laughs> of course he says that. Draft loves Luna. <laughs> draft. Yeah, he, and the, that thing he did at BronyCon is stuck in my head till now. What do you do? The whole deal with guys is a troll question. We're going to have to excuse that. And we cleared this at the beginning of the con. Twilight Sparkle is best pony. Oh, God, Raph. And the hall exploded. <laughs> you should have thrown a tomato. I would have gone to Ralph's or wherever, a grocery store, come back and throw the tomato. Because <laughs> people, people would still be trying to figure out what his last joke was about. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's any QLA uh, draft one time made a joke on, and nobody got it. The audience is kind of quiet. And then Ray's just sitting in the audience and he goes, Ah! <laughs> 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 Charity laugh. Oh, so see, see, what, what I like about, like, you know, with, with Saber and I, uh, we were kind of talking about this earlier today, actually, was how at Everfree Northwest was the first time we met. But with Saber, he was so busy with... Uh, with everything he was doing with the documentary and all that. And I was still kind of meeting people for the first time. I was all over the place and we really didn't hang out that much. Like he interviewed me after I showed up, what, like 30 minutes late. <laughs> you were late. You got lost in traffic or something. I'm like, no, guy, I, we like, went to, guy. uh, we, we went to like, Apparently my, my, my time is, uh, expendable. <laughs> this is not, I don't want to sit here. I, and I, was, right. I, was, I had a bouquet of flowers and everything. Like this. <laughs> Friend. And then the day the flowers actually died before he showed up. I was like, oh. let's get this interview over with. Well, it was the thought that counted. But, uh, and, and yeah, and then at a question of late, I mean, we were like side by side the majority of the time. And it, it was just like, I don't know. I, I just, I had so much fun at both conventions, but a question of was. That was that was an interesting one, especially out at Disneyland. Oh, Disneyland was just amazingly fun. That was the highlight of my entire summer, uh, even though it was in November. But still, <laughs> summer is long for me when you're unemployed. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I I uh, got 
gotta say, like, I mean, everything with West, yeah, it was a very busy convention, especially with our interviews and filming and everything. Uh, it's just all over the place. It doesn't help with those two venues as well. But yeah. um, at, at Equestria LA, it was just, it was really cool uh, hanging out with Race and just, uh, and what's really cool about this fandom is, yeah, My Little Pony's great. Yeah, it's cool to make content. Yeah, it's cool to have an audience who will appreciate it and give you critiques and whatnot. But it's cool that you can meet, the, the best thing of all is how you can meet people that you like, you call them, you call them your friends, and and that they'll be your friend long after this fandom has run its course. So I, I'm, that's what I'm taking away from it. So yeah. Awesome, or, awesome. Uh, be- here's, here's the thing, uh, since Saber Spark crashed this party and we kind of need to get back on track, so we need to ask the four basic questions for you, Saber. Yes, um, exactly what I was thinking about. Yeah. So, um, who is your favorite pony? It changes all the time. At uh, current standing? Current standing, probably uh, Obama. Obama. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, wasn't, I wasn't a Fluttershy. Irish pony. No, Fluttershy right now. Awesome, awesome. So, um, what's your favorite episode? Favorite episode? The season or the entire show and as a whole? Um, any, anyone. Um, you could answer well, we allow the... multiple choices if you can't make your mind up. I love, um, the last roundup was good, you know, even with the, with the Derby fiasco, I saw that was a great episode. I love Sweet and Elite. I love, um, you know, I've only actually watched three episodes of the show, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still gonna watch the rest now. Um, no, I, I loved, uh, a dog and pony show is great. Um, Sleep as a Pony Sleep as a Pony Bill was my favorite episode this entire season season three. I love that episode. Oh awesome. And those are my favorite episodes. What's just open the that? door between Inception and MLP. <laughs> <laughs> so um, our next question is how did you become a fan of MLP? I was browsing the interwebs back in like two thousand eleven. It was uh, around August or so. I saw my first pony related thing there. It was like some YouTube poop for Purple's, uh, Purple Eyes, who made some YouTube, uh, not YouTube, I'm oh, sorry, an abridged, uh, he makes, um... The Mentally Abridged Edition? No, 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 uh, Purple Eyes, WTF is his name, and he makes the One Piece abridged. And, and oh. One Piece abridged, they, they had a, a, a My Little Pony gag in there. And then I'm like, okay, what's with the pony? And then I started searching through the YouTube and, and meme based things like that, I saw more and more pony everywhere. I thought, okay, I'll give this show a chance. And, you know, animation's back, cool, we'll give it a chance. Watched it, and there wasn't anything crazy over it. And then I gave it a break for a couple of days, and then I just saw it everywhere. I thought, you know what, I'll give it another shot. I watched uh, another episode, I loved it, and I'm like, oh god, we're burning. <laughs> I think we're all, that, that oh god moment. Yeah, every single person, oh god. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah, that, what, what like, AC was saying, he looked in the mirror, and he was like, I'm a brony. <laughs> New title for the documentary. Oh God, I'm a brony. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's a nice title. Like, <laughs> I'm sure, like the five-year-old little girls that are watching that show are thinking the same thing. Like, oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> These guys are bronies. <laughs> I love ponies. <laughs> that could be like the opener of your documentary. It'd be like, oh, my oh God, God. I'm a brony. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. And, but essentially, um, that story is um, the read it and weep. If you'd consider that, like. If it was done in human form, it is a brony documentary. Hey, you're right. <laughs> Even with the break of entering. <laughs> <laughs> Toys R Us in the middle of the night. Exactly. <laughs> Who told you about that? <laughs> was that plushy? <laughs> and the last question for you, Saber, is um, what do your family and friends think about your love for the show? Oh, goodness. When I first uh, watched it, I, was, I, was, uh, I had a room I was living in an apartment, I guess. I was living with my sister, my older sister, and her and my brother-in-law. They were married, and uh, they had a house that's not too far away from the school I was going to, so I was living with them. And my brother-in-law is an officer, he's a southern guy, and my sister works at a, uh, a courthouse, so they're, you know, they're, they're very business, they're very, you know, they have real lives, real jobs, it's very, you know, they, they don't really get on the internet and this kind of stuff that's really appeal to them. So, when I decided to go to a Walmart and buy a Rainbow Dash, like, figure, bring it home, and start cutting its mane and make it look actually show accurate. My sister walks in, and she's like, what the heck are you doing? I'm like, oh, hi, Sarah. It's ponies, yeah. <laughs> and, she's, and I have, hair, I have her hairspray spraying on the ponies. I'm like, eh, it's so show accurate. And she just shakes her head, does a double take, and then she starts laughing. And, uh, yeah, I mean, 
all in all, I mean, she, she nowadays, she's cool with it. I mean, it's, it's just a show. Because for my family, when I, whenever I share the funny stuff, I mean, it's kind of weird with the conventions and everything, because I'm sure they, I mean, they still are cool with it, but um, they just don't want to take time away from other things like getting a master's degree or getting a job, which I completely agree with. That's <laughs> I know that feeling. Yeah, they're, they're like, you know, hey, you know, make sure this funny stuff doesn't eat your life up. And I'm like, okay, I completely understand. That's fine. But as so are they as, aware that you are on the production of your second documentary now? Yep. Mom's like, so when is this thing going to actually be done? It's been like months. And I'm like, very soon. <laughs> yeah. Soon. It's another half he, he, turn, he turns into lightning to a fan. Very soon. It's going to be done, But, I mean, there, as far as, let's say, like, I know some families are like, oh, my son ain't going to be a brony. You know, they're not like that. They don't care. They're indifferent. Okay. I mean, this seems to be the theme for how parents react to um, child liking ponies. We find it three words, kids these days, you know? <laughs> parents react to like, My Little Pony. Meh. Parents react, what, my son watches ponies? He picks out Mickey's belt. One, one of my favorite, actually, about the Bernie documentary that just came out was, <laughs> one of my favorite parts about it had to have been when they were showing the dad, who was like, I don't get it. I don't want to get it. And they brought him to Broningon. <clears throat> and the, the look on his face, that sheer terror look in his eyes. Oh, poor Lyle's dad. He, he, was, he was Republican in every sense of the word. Oh, he had, like, right during the interview, when they're interviewing him in the house, you can see Bush Cheney signs in the background. I, part, part of me wonders if they set up that scene on purpose, because I was... <laughs> I was surprised that he didn't punch the camera. Well, you see his face? I mean, he, he, he looked like he was surrounded by, like, machete-wielding terrorists. And he's like, I don't know, get out of this place. Oh, my God. <laughs> Looks like the days have taken over. <laughs> <laughs> but do you, you know that Lyle's in a boarding school, right? <laughs> yeah. In the credits of the documentary, it's like, usually it's, it's usually like good stuff, like, you know, this couple got married. This guy got a job. Lyle got disowned by his family. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. The moment uh, I saw that, I was like, not sure what they mean by it. <laughs> I completely agree, not sure. I don't know if it's a good thing or... <laughs> because usually the last one is the kind of negative one. It's like, everyone has a successful, the last one will be got a job in the fast food business. <laughs> Why? Lyle hasn't been seen for months. <laughs> oh, no, that's it's for God bless you, Lyle. We don't mean anything wrong. And, uh, interestingly uh, enough, you talk about the documentary. Um, so, Saber, what's your opinion about um, the Brony Con documentary? The Brony Con documentary was good for what it was. Um, it was not standing. Uh, I think there's a lot of hype that was built up because over the time, just the fandom had, all, had its eyes on that on the documentary the entire time. We were, we were really looking forward to it, and uh, not to mention that they had a pretty big budget that the fandom so generously gave to them. Um, and then I think when it came out, I, I was a little bit—it was a little underwhelming for me. I was like, eh, you know, for what they for what they had, it really wasn't that great. Um, it's still a good story. It's still good, good interviews, good stories. It's it's neat hearing other people's stories and how they got to where they are how they are better off because of it so I, I think it's awesome but uh, as far as I don't know it, it, it's it's if it would have been more upfront about what it was doing and the money it had it would the feeling towards the documentary would have been different that's just my opinion but overall I give it a, a 6 out of 10 okay awesome so so from that documentary have you learned anything that you can bring to your own good question um, perspective is a big one because uh, as much as I love this fandom, I think it has a bad case of the of the lightning hooves of, of pretty much, and I, I call it lightning hoof because lightning hoof is my character. Whenever I, like I get like, oh my god, yeah, love him totally. Because <laughs> because uh, he, cause there are people out there who get so blinded by by the message of bronies that they forget that it's just still a bunch of fans. Like we're a bunch of fans <laughs> who are friends who watch a show who make stuff. That's it. I mean, it's, it's what you make of it. I mean, some people do make it a life philosophy, and they get really excited. But uh, I think it's important for brothers to get, off, to get off their soapbox sometimes, look around, see the world for what it is, try to actually, you know, communicate with it and show them from our point of view what we do and not from the most extreme 
perspective because I think uh, I don't want them to think I don't want, I don't want society to think that we're all a bunch of cosplayers who, who waste all of our money on My Little Pony stuff. That's not the truth. I want to show them that we're pretty level-headed folks who just have a really unusual uh, hobby. Hobby, there you go. Yeah. Are you planning to, you know, your purpose of your documentary, is it similar to how John Delancey said that he wants to try to, you know, level out and give Bronies a chance to speak out against the kind of negative feedback we get from Howard Stern and Fox News and what's his, Glover, is it, that guy? Here's the way, here's the thing, though, is the way society's geared at right now, the way social norms are, uh, they're never going to understand. They're never going to understand. Um, the, the bronies are just a juicy story for them to get a headline and move on. They don't, I, I guarantee how Stern, Stern doesn't even care about us right now. He probably doesn't even remember. Um, neither does the people who did the Fox News interviews. You know, there's actually an interesting thing just going on the Howard Stern thing. My, uh, my best friend listens to that show, Saber's Park. And, uh, <laughs> No, uh, I'm like, yeah, you uh, best friends. <laughs> well, it, it's funny. Uh, this is Tommy who I'm talking about. Saber, do you know about Tommy? By the way, I think I. Was He's he the, the guy. One? If you if you remember the My Little Vegas video, he was the one with the mask. Uh, not like <laughs> costume mask. Not off the top of my head. That's fine. Uh, anyways, he he's helped with me quite a bit. But we've uh, pretty much like done videography for racetracks for years and. Uh, he uh, he listens to Howard Stern, and I told him about this, the whole Brody thing. And he's like, oh, yeah, I, I forget if he had heard it when it came up, but he actually told me about, I don't know, a week or two after all this came up that Howard Stern revisited the topic because a lot of people contacted the show who were either into the show or knew people who were into the show. And I guess he actually took back a bit of what they were saying from what he told me. Really, mm. and and that's something that's something I think a lot of people overlooked in the fandom because I didn't know that. See, and I I wouldn't have known it either, and I can't like I didn't hear it myself, but hearing that from you know when Tommy told me that, I was like I am amazed that they actually did that. I'm writing this and, down right now. I'm gonna mention this in the documentary. I think it's like he got hammered so by so many emails and stuff like that. See, but Howard Stern's a guy who doesn't generally care. Yeah, he, he says... And that's he, why I was surprised that they actually did that. Um, I mean, bronies are just weird overall. I mean, it's, not many people are going to take the time to actually get to know a fandom. I mean, let's be honest, when it comes to furries, how many of us actually decide to sit down and do our homework before passing our judgments? It's kind of hard. It's kind of hard. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a hard subject. It's not it's not easy to pass them along with, like, this is how I feel, and give a second thought and just pass them along. Uh, I don't know. I, I, for for John Delancey saying, yeah, let's, let's show the world what Bernie's are, I'm not doing that, really. I, I, I want to make a documentary where I want, you know, the average Joe to watch and say, okay, cool, I'm cool with these guys. I don't want them to... I, I'm not crusading a mess of saying, go, Bronies, yeah, we're going to change the world. We're not going to change the world. It's plain and simple. There's only, what, maybe about a million, two of us? I don't know. But the people who have changed, it's going to change them for the better. So it's not going to change the world. It's going to change a handful of people, and that's still good progress. It's still a good thing. Yeah. Um, but the idea of praying around is like, a message. I'm not doing that. That's that's too preachy for me. And, you know, it's, it's funny because almost along the same lines, when I made the first Bronies React, the, one of the biggest things that I... Like, I pretty much bold with this when I sent the format to everybody. I said, we are not trying to prove a point in the sense that, in, in, in the internet sense of, this is why you're wrong and we're right. Because that never, ever works, and it makes the person who's making the comeback generally look bad. Yeah. And I was like, we have to take what they say with a grain of salt, you know, have fun with it. But, I, and I, I pretty much, I, like I said, I didn't tell anyone what to say. But I did clarify to them that we're not trying to prove them wrong or necessarily prove a point. I think I, I figured that would all just come with it. And, if you know, I didn't strive for that, but it kind of happened. But it's the thing, like, you have to, you have to, like you said, society nowadays, it, it's kind of like whoever gets the first call, it, it's almost dangerous, especially on the internet, it's dangerous to argue against that call because people then say oh you're just trying to defend yourself you're stupid or whatever and that's
that's why I was surprised. With how Saber was defending this with the original Kurito in the videos. I know. See? <laughs> but he made that argument first, so now I can't rebut it. <laughs> that's true. And, I mean, it happens every day on EQD. There's always first. Yeah, because oh people gosh. who like to get the attention, I don't know. Yeah. Um, but, but when it comes to when it comes to I guess conveying any kind of message of bronies, we shouldn't be condescending. We shouldn't be holier than thou. We should be, you know what? We're here. We're weird. We like what we do. Enjoy it. And we don't even have to put them in people's faces. You know, if they, if they want to ask about it willingly, cool. That's fine with me. I don't want to shove it in their faces. That's so obnoxious. Oh, okay. Yeah, and you know what? If if you can accept, like you know what we what we're into isn't necessarily the norm. It's like, who cares if, you know, others are like, oh, that's kind of weird. It's like, whatever. What is normal for the spider is chaos to the fly. True, true. Th- that's, that's a good analogy. really nice proper right there. So, is that in the documentary? I learned it from, uh, I learned it from a movie. It was The Addams Family. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm dead serious. So, um, Saber, this documentary, um, who is the target audience for? Because uh, you're saying that it's not like John Delancey's video. Who, who, who's the target audience? Well, I mean, uh, we're releasing it on channels that are primarily the Bernie channels. So, I mean, I'm, I'm not gonna be, I'm not gonna BS you. Uh, the initial audience will be Bronies, but it's not. I'm not aiming at them. I'm not pandering. That's why in this documentary, I never say things like "us," "we," or "are." Because I'm not put, I'm not putting myself in an area as a brony. I mean, people who know me as a brony will say, "Oh, it's Saber's part." But I want this to be where a stranger can sit down, watch it, and not even be the wiser that I am a brony. Uh, I want them to be. I want this to be unbiased. So uh, I know the majority of the viewers will be probably bronies because hey, it's my opponent. They're going to watch it. Let's be honest. But I hope that the few who aren't bronies who watch it can still enjoy it. Gets the end of it. Okay, awesome. So you're going to be like the storyteller in a sense. Yep. He's not throwing pandas at us. <laughs> They're red pandas. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. They're pandering to us, pandering. <laughs> oh, um, I, like you, I like how you kind of have like a phrase for you now, Saber. Like, everyone kind of knows you for it. I know. I, I got lucky on that one. They're, pan- they're throwing pandas at us. Out of, all, out of all the dumb phrases I can come up with, I need the lamest one. They're throwing pandas at us. That's why at the next convention I go to, I'm going to cosplay as a panda. <laughs> I'm gonna, uh, Penny yeah. Link. <laughs> there you go, Penny Link. Let's catch up. Here's the question for you, Saber, because I, I, I've asked this to AC, and the question is, for new people out there that's going into the fandom or trying to produce content for the fandom, um, what's your advice to them if their target is to become popular? Oh, you mean popular as in like on YouTube? Um, anyway, in their field like drawing. Oh, I guess, or... like, yeah, fanfic or whatever. Don't go f- into it for popularity. <laughs> that's my advice because when you try to force it, it's never going to work out. Uh, whatever, like I mean, for crying out loud, whenever I do even force work nowadays, like. My bronies one on one about conventions. I'm like, yes, the best thing I planned out. Yeah, I got to try guys some news. And, and I make that Alicorn video in about 10 minutes just from a binge of inspiration. I'm like, okay, let's do this one instead. This one got 100,000 views. This, this sounds so familiar. <laughs> Welcome to my life, Race. <laughs> uh, you're well, like I, That's like why I, we're I, brothers. I, yeah, well, it's funny because the thing I told them was you can't predict it. You know, you really can't. It's all about timing and luck, really. Yeah. And it makes you go in. Yeah, worrying about it, then it's going to be a case where you're going to most likely burn yourself out before you even get a chance. You know, actually, we got this assignment in university because I'm doing an advertising minor, and the lecturer comes in and says, you can never predict when a video will go viral. Your next assignment is to create a viral video. (laughs) (laughs) I'm like, what? How does that even work? I mean, we had to just take it and put in all the controversial issues in it, you know, like, just put sex and put, like, Islamophobia and stuff all there and get people all hyped up about it. It was basically one of the most unethical assignments we ever had, but we knew that if anyone sees this video, it's going to go viral for the wrong reason. That sounds like fun. Then <laughs> <laughs> you... What did, I, what did I just say? Sorry, Norman? I, I, I don't know. I, just, I made a sentence that didn't make any sense at all. I was like, that, 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 that fun does have fun for me. Fun. Then your your teacher is the most contradicting teacher I've known. Yeah, he's the same one that I talked about. The contradicts, you know, is like, what do you start first? Do you start with the concept or the creative? (laughs) You 
must always start with a concept. Concept is a result of creativity. What? <laughs> <laughs> Boy. And that wraps up the guest time for today. Thank you very much, AC Race Bus, and thank you very much, Saber Spark, for popping in. Anytime. It's my pleasure. You yeah. are welcome, guys. Mm-hmm. So if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you may contact us at show at gmail.com. You can also reach us on Twitter. Our Twitter handle is at show. My Twitter handle is at stpinky, the S-T-P-I-N-K-I-E. And I am at Norman Sanzo. AC? What? <laughs> he died. Hi. <laughs> Yeah, no, we're still on. Race Fest, I'm Michael Rack Video Kazama. <laughs> okay, uh, what your was I supposed to do? I'm sorry, your, your Twitter handle. Oh, <laughs> it's uh, at AC underscore Race Fest. Right, Saber Spark? I am Saber Spark, and you can find me at Saber Spark on Twitter. Okay, oh. so guys, um, here's, here's something that Dan forgot to mention. Um, where can they find you online? AC, you go first. Yeah. Online, well, you can find me on YouTube, AC Race Best on YouTube. You can find me on Tumblr, AC Race Best on Tumblr. You can find me on Facebook, AC Race Best on Facebook. I'm sensing a team here. Yeah, Twitter's the only one that had that dang underscore because somebody apparently already got that name. You're welcome. <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> oh, God, talk about real estate. <laughs> <laughs> and um, Saber, what about you? Where can they find you? You can find me on YouTube at Saber Spark. You can find me on Facebook at Saber Spark. You can find me on Tumblr, though I rarely use it, at Saber Spark. And you can contact me at my PO Box office. I'm just kidding. Who uses those? <laughs> and page, send, send my, all money. And, <laughs> and my pager is. 555555. Uh, <laughs> five, 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 five. Exactly. <laughs> okay, um, once again. You just mentioned he had an iPhone and he's looking for a pager. <laughs> I made your iPhone noise. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, um, Dan, take us out. All right. So if you would like to contact any of us personally, you can contact me at Daniel at the MBS Show dot com and Norman at Norman at the MBS Show dot com. So guys, let's wrap it up for the week. I've been Daniel Anthony. I've been Norman Sanzo. And I've been AC Race Best. And I'm Saber Spark. Yay! We'll see you next week. And thank you for joining us on this special episode. Bye bye. <laughs>
see, Saber Spark is going to school for political science. I can't wait for... <laughs> I graduated! Oh, you graduated already. Congratulations. <laughs> so it's been a year, race. Way to stay up to date with me. <laughs> <laughs> well, the last time I well, spoke to you, you were still in school. Well, well. <laughs> Sorry, guys. This episode is getting derpy. So, I'm sorry if I threw it off or anything. I, I didn't mean to stick my foot in it. No, 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 no problem. problem. Like... You're, you're a nice surprise because everything was... Let's just say you're a nice surprise. That's yeah. what my mom tells me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God.